I see that many of you love drawing textures for characters. You probably wonder how to animate it in 3D so that your characters don't turn into a thin line like this. Don't give up that dream. Today I have a way to animate textures so that no matter which way you turn, you will always see your lovely textures. I also have other tutorials such as Top Down Walking Cycle and I also play your games on Saturday. Please subscribe to see more. In this tutorial, there are mainly three steps. The first step is to make a texture to face the camera. The second step is to add more textures like left, right, front, and back. And the third one is to add the walk cycle. Okay, let's get started. First of all, let's look what I currently have. So I have this person nodon that can move around and I have already attached a camera that can rotate. I have also prepared a lot of textures here, but of course, like you do not have to prepare these many textures. Yeah, so this is my current setting, a person that can walk around and a camera that can rotate. In the first step, we are going to make sure that the texture always faces the camera. The problem is when we connect this one to the person node on directly, sometimes the texture will rotate like this and it will disappear. So for this step, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to attach this one to the box and the box will move when the person node on move and this box will also rotate when we rotate the camera. Okay, let's add a box. This box must have the same size as the texture. Then I link this one to the texture. I will call this texture box. Go to the settings, remove everything except movable. Connection point should be from center to center. Next, we have to move this when the person node on move, right? So here we need a free slider to move this box around. I'm going to add an invisible and fixed box. Go to settings, remove all the properties. Then move this one to the center of the world. Then I'm going to add a free slider. Basically, this one will help moving this texture box around. But we also need to rotate the box on Y axis right to make sure that the texture always faces us. So here I'm going to add Y hinge. But this Y hinge cannot connect to this free slider directly. So we need another proxy box. Go to the settings, remove everything except movable. Connection point is center to center. Then connect the lower part to free slider and the upper part to Y hinge. Then we connect this Y hinge to the texture box. Um, Okay, now we are missing input for three sliders and also for Y hinge. Let's fill them out one by one. What are input to the free slider? It should be the location of the person node on. So we are going to add a location sensor. Then I'm connecting this one to the person. I go to the properties, remove visible. And then connect location X output free sliders x input we are doing the same for y and z as well okay what about y hinge okay let's take a look for now yeah now the pikachu always moves when the person node on moves but it does not rotate yet we have to measure how much the camera has rotated so we need a head node on And then I have to read the angle value. So here I need the angle sensor. I'm connecting this one to the head node on. And basically when this one rotates by Y degree, I will also have to rotate this Y hinge by Y degree as well. So I'm going to connect this Y to Y hinge. 
also remember to remove visible properties. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, so now when a person no longer walks around, we can see this Pikachu. And when we rotate the camera, this texture always faces us. Yay! So if you only need one texture for your game, you are done. But let's say I also want to change the texture when I face left or right. Let's go to the next step. In this step, we are going to make sure that when a person or a camera rotates, the texture will also rotate. Let's see how we should change the texture when the camera rotates. So now, at 0 degree, we will see the front texture. But then I'm going to rotate this by 90 degree. At 90 degree, I will use the texture that faces towards the left. And then what about 180 degree? Here is at the back. So yeah, I will use the back texture. And next is 270 degree or negative 90. Here I will use the texture that faces towards the right. Don't forget that, like, a person can also rotate. Let's say I have rotated the camera for 90 degree. And then the person also rotates itself by 90 degree. In this case, I will see the front again. So yeah, I will have to use angle diff to get the correct face. So now I have the angle of the head, right? We also need to get the angle of the person. Connect this one to the person node on. Next, I'm going to compute the diff. So I need angle difference node on. And then I'm going to compute the diff between the person node on and the head node on, which is our camera. Next, I'm going to pick a correct texture. Here, one way is like I add a lot of comparison, like if it is less than 45 degree, I will use front texture. But here, I'm going to show you how to use a marker node on. I'm going to add a 2D marker node on. And then expand it. The input of marker node on is only from 0 to 1. So I will have to map the anchor difference into 0 to 1 first. I go to the map settings. I go to, and then change input range to be from negative 180 to 180. Which is the output of anchor difference. The output range is from 0 to 1. Okay. Then I'm going to connect this one to X. Let me rearrange this a little bit. So here I'm getting the anchor difference between the person nodons and the head nodon. Then I will compute the difference. And then I will map into this marker nodon. Okay, so let's add a correct face. So for this step, I'm going to use only these four textures. Connect these four to the texture box. And that at this position, it means 0 degree. Here, it means 180. And the left means negative 180. So let's look at our diagram. From our diagram, we need to use the front texture when we are from negative 45 to 45 degree. So to read that value, I'm going to add a boost eyes node on. Go to settings, change it to rectangle, close it. And negative 45 to 45 is here. Right. And when we are in this area, we will use the front texture. What about from 45 degree difference to 135 degree difference? It is going to be at this location. And then here I have to use the texture that faces towards the left, which is this one. And here is from 135 to 180. I'm going to use the back texture. 
Okay, let's continue this side. So here is like from negative 45 degree, right? Here from negative 45 degree to negative 135, I'm going to use the texture that faces towards the right. Yeah, and the last one, which is from negative 135 to negative 180, I'm going to use the back texture. Okay, let's test. Now, yeah, the texture will change correctly. But what if I rotate? Yeah, but when I walk diagonally, the texture flickers a lot. That's because the size of this circle is too big. So I have to reduce the size of this. Go to settings, change to 0 0.01 size. Okay. And also make this person invisible. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah. So now when the person no longer walks around, we will get correct textures. And what if I rotate the camera? Yeah, it will rotate correctly. Nice. And it also does not flicker as much as just now when I move diagonally. Okay, and that's it for step 2. Please continue if you want to add a walking animation. Here come our third step. Let's add a walk cycle. Now we have already used the x value for the direction. And we still have y value unused. I'm going to use the y value to select which frame we are going to use. For this example, let me only use 2 frames per direction. So we will need a counter to store the current value of Y. Go to the settings and change the value to be loop. The count range is from 0 to 60. You can adjust this later if you think it's too slow or too fast. Then next, I'm going to add a map because I have to change the value 60 into 1. Go to settings, input range is 0 to 60, which is the outer range. And output range is from 0 to 1. Connect the counter to map and map to Y input. Next, we have to resize the blue eyes node on because we need the top half for one frame and the bottom half for another frame. And I'm going to copy this. The bottom part is the first frame and the top part is the second frame. Let's connect this one to the second frame of each direction. For example, this one is for the back direction. I'm going to connect to the second frame of the back direction. Here is the second frame of right direction. So it's this one. This one, the second frame of the front direction. Here is the second frame of the left direction. And again, the second frame of the back direction. And don't forget to link all of these textures to the box. Okay, next, we have to move the marker on Y-axis. When should Pikachu be walking? It should start walking when we move the control stick. So I'm going to copy the control stick here. The left control stick. And then I'm going to do the settings. I do not need analog input, I only need digital, which means that the outputs are negative 1, 0, or 1. Do the same for both. But we do not need a negative value here, right? So I'm going to add absolute value for each control. So now we have the absolute values of both states. But the summation of two absolute values can be 0, 1, or 2. But I want it to be 1 only, so I will need a help from map. The purpose of this map is to change the value 2 into 1. Connect the sum to this. And go to map settings. Output range is also 0 to 1. But we are going to restrict the range. This means that when the input is 2, the output is still 1. Then I connect the map output to the count up part of the counter. So now when I push the left stick, the marker will move on Y axis and, and we will change the textures. Okay, let's try. Yeah, 
นานาอาว่าปิกาจูวอล์แอนเวนไอซ็อกวอล์กิ้งเดอะเท็กเจอร์อัลโซสต็อปชินจิงแอนไอแคนอัลโซโรเทตเดอะคาเมร่าอารามย่าโอเค but but note that if you want to use four textures per direction you will need one more box because one box can only have eight textures and another problem is that if you add one more box you cannot directly connect this one to the Y hinge and reuse it it will result in some flickering problem What you will need is to copy this Y hinge, this box, and also free slider. And yeah, I have already included the code of this one. Yeah, so yeah, have fun using this in any of the 3D platform games or any game, so that your texture will not turn into a thin paper again. Okay, let me know what you would like to see next. Bye bye, and see you next time.